the honorable the chief justice shri devendra kumar upadhyay the honorable judges of the bombay high court both sitting and retired who are with us in audience today mr nitin thakkar president of the bombay bar association mr venkatesh dond vice president senior advocates my colleagues at the bar family members of late fali nariman his granddaughters nina and khurshid who are with here today and everyone present good evening we have assembled here today to pay a heartfelt tribute to shri fali sam nariman the legendary jurist and member of the bombay bar association who passed away on wednesday 21st february 2024 at the very outset we would like to extend our gratitude to the honorable chief justice for so graciously allowing us to host this meeting on these lush green lawns of the bombay high court we lawyers rarely get to be on the front side of this magnificent building when we went to meet the chief justice regarding today's condolence meeting the first thing that he told us was that our bar association room would be too small to hold a gathering considering the large number of persons who were expected to attend and immediately offered the use of the lawns thank you sir i would also be failing in my duty if i didn't take a moment to thank the registrar mr bhagwat and the staff of the pwd and the bba and my fellow colleagues from the committee for helping us in organizing this event now over the years the name fali nariman has become synonymous with law and the legal profession in our country being a first generation lawyer myself his name was one of the first few i had heard of before i decided to take up law when i joined the bar each time mr nariman came down to the bombay high court word would quickly spread in the library and we would throng the courtroom to see him in action he had a distinct booming voice which would command the attention of everyone around him in my relatively short career at the bar i have been fortunate to have assisted him in a matter before the supreme court and witnessed his brilliance first hand this was easily one of my fondest memories at the bar initially when i was informed that he would be the senior who i would be assisting i was extremely nervous i remember reading and rereading my briefs several times over before traveling to delhi just to make sure that i was in a position to answer any question i was asked i had even prepared a list of dates since i was told that one was required to have it ready during the briefing conference i had finalized two list of dates a detailed exhaustive one running into several pages and a shorter condensed one in case mr nariman wanted only important and relevant events a delhi advocate on record had fixed a conference with him on a thursday evening and a matter was scheduled to be listed the following day when we reached his house we were guided to his office on the first floor where he was seated at a very large round table within just a few minutes of interacting with him and explaining the matter my nervousness dissipated and i realized that the man we all idolized was a symbol a simple humble and an approachable person who was blessed with an encyclopedia of knowledge he had lots of stories to tell us he immediately discarded the short condensed list of dates which was first handed over to him as not being good enough and over the next hour patiently went over the exhaustive one with us frequently pausing to ask questions and doubts as we went through it and if we were unable to respond within 5 or 10 seconds he would jokingly say you bombay lawyers and chuckle and then nod his head after we went through the entire brief he then started dictating his own list of dates in the form of a note to a stenographer who we had taken along despite that i still remember him telling us you also take it down after the dictation was done he told us to get it transcribed and ready for him when he got back from his daily walk which we then learned was a sacrosanct to him however we were instructed that the list of dates should not be more than 5 pages long we worked on it and after careful deliberation managed to condense it to the desired 5 pages 
After Mr. Nariman returned from his walk, he sat with the list of dates and painstakingly made corrections in hand to further condense it. We then wrapped up for the day and he called us over to his house the next morning. We returned the following morning with a printout of the condensed list of dates that he had finalized the evening prior, which was now only two pages. We were pleasantly surprised to see Mr. Nariman in his court attire and a Parsi prayer cap, what we call Banwani Topi, on, uh, on his head sipping a cup of tea, which he graciously also offered us. However, when we handed over the finalized list of dates to him, we got our first shock. He very nonchalantly told us that after thinking about the matter the previous night, he decided not to use it. And instead, he wanted us to take down another short note, which he then quietly proceeded to dictate. He corrected this one paragraph note and told us to quickly get it typed and meet him in court. The next shock came when we realized that this note which he had just dictated was styled in the form of an order of the court. We were completely baffled at this, but no one had the guts to question his decision. We reached court and Mr. Nariman was already seated. He inquired whether we had sufficient copies of the note to which we answered in the affirmative. When our matter reached, he let the petitioner's senior counsel argue for a few minutes without interruption. However, when he saw that the bench was inclined to issue notice, he sprang up from his seat and politely interjected, pointing out that he had a solution which would not only put an end to the SLP, but also protect the interest of the petitioners in the suit. He then tendered the one paragraph note to the bench and before our opponents could respond or speak on its contents, the bench had already disposed of the SLP in terms of the note and the next matter was called out. It took us all a minute to grasp what had just happened. However, in hindsight, we realized that what we had witnessed was the result of a combination of hard work that he had put in into understanding the matter the previous night, his sheer brilliance in knowing and understanding what the bench would want from the matter, and his unparalleled court craft in successfully convincing the court into accepting his submission. This almost magical experience will always remain etched in my mind. The passing of Mr. Nariman is an irretrievable loss, not only to his family, but to the legal fraternity as a whole. On behalf of everyone present here today, I would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to Nina and Khurshid and all the other members of the Nariman family who could not be with us today. We pray that the Almighty bestows peace upon the departed soul. I would now like to call upon the Honorable the Chief Justice to address the gathering. My esteemed sister and brother judges, sitting and retired, Mr. Nitin Thakka, President and other office bearers of Bombay Bar Association, esteemed senior advocates and other learned members of Bar, bereaved members of Nariman family, members of registry and staff, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> there are lawyers and jurists who are termed greatest, finest, grandest, distinguished, outstanding, and so on. All such lawyers simply put together was late Padma Bibhushan Pali Sam Nariman. We have gathered here for paying homage to such an eminent and outstanding lawyer and jurist that this country has ever produced. The stature of late Pali was so high that words fall short and inadequate to describe him. He was truly intellectual and brilliant in his legal arena, having dominated the legal landscape for over seven and a half decades. Not surprisingly and most deservedly, therefore, he is showered with rich tributes such as Titan of Legal Profession, Doyan, Colossus, Vishwam Pitama of Indian Judiciary, 
legal giant, North Star, and so on. One cannot escape his life's journey and experiences, which would remind us about the great personality that he was. He was a boon for legal landscape of the country and would be an inspiration for future generations. Now that he is no more in our midst, the vacuum is hard to fill in, but the least we can do is strive to remember him for what he was <coughs> and cherish his legacy that will live on forever. Let us therefore celebrate his life and his achievements that I am sure each one of us would be proud to emulate as much as possible. He joined the bar at the age of 21 under mentorship of late Kaikabad, Lala and thereafter the prestigious symbols of Sir Jamshed Ji Kanga, one of the greatest and finest lawyers at Bombay Bar then. Late Fali had very firm notions and beliefs. He had declined the esteemed position of judgeship of the Bombay High Court for certain reasons. He had resigned as additional Solicitor General of India due to declaration of emergency. He had also declined the pos position of Attorney General on two occasions once in 1996, then again in 1998, as the trauma of resigning in protest as a law officer for the second time dissuaded him from saying yes on both these occasions. Pali Nariman held a strong belief in the responsibility of seniors in the profession in nurturing and guiding the young generation of legal professionals. He was always determined to be a mentor and guide with his wisdom and experience for such young talents in shaping their future in legal fraternity. Late Fali Nariman made a huge impact in India as also globally. He was widely recognized as a constitutional expert. He believed in the core values of constitution and embraced the preamble and its principle by living up to them. He once wrote, and I quote, our constitution cannot survive long if we only pay lip service to the directive principles of state policy. We must implement them in earnest. The neglect of the poor and needy in our country poses the greatest single serious threat to our survival as a nation." Unquote. He was so engrossed with the principle of freedom and independence of judiciary that once when asked as to who he was representing the to, in the challenge against NJAC matter by the five judge bench of Honorable Supreme Court, he said, my client is independence of the judiciary. Such was his devotion and dedication, which is rare and hard to be outdone by anyone. Late Nariman, perhaps amongst the last of a distinguished group of legal luminaries, including Nani Palkewala, CK Daftari, Ashok Desai, Omi Sirvai, and Soli Sorabji was universally respected for what he was. Beyond the courtroom, Pali Nariman was known for his bonding with judges as a trusted friend and a staunch advocate for their rights and independence, which earned praise of the legal community not only as a distinguished lawyer but also as a trusted mentor to judges and lawyers alike. His autobiography, Before Memory Fades, and many other countless and proud moments about him are testimonials that he will never fade away from our memories. With the loss of this great soul, the nation, the judicial system, his family and friends would miss him immensely, but he will always be remembered as T.S. Eliot once said, our dead are never dead to us until we have forgotten them. Pali Nariman's journey ensures that we will never forget him. My colleagues and I share the grief of the bereaved family. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. My Lord, the Chief Justice and other judges, past and present, family members of Sufali Narima, senior advocates and all other members of the bar, ladies and gentlemen. Morning of 21st February 24, 
brought a shocking, unbelievable news of our revered Fali uncle having departed from amongst us. For me, it was tragic as I had communicated with him by email on 19 February 24, informing him about full court reference being held for his junior, Mr. Bomi Zaiwala. He replied on 20th February, expressing his delight that full court reference was being held for his colleague of many years. And it was signed by him with a firm handwriting, probably one of his last letter signed by him. I replied to his email sending him link to enable him to watch the proceedings of full court reference next day. It was sent late in the evening and therefore it was not replied. But probably he wanted to directly convey to Bomi his feelings for him. The letter is a treasure for me now. My biggest regret in life is that we at BBA were not able to record a podcast episode with him. In September 23, myself and Vishal visited his residence and presented him with the memento to honor him for having completed more than 70 years at the bar. He very warmly received us and inquired about Bombay High Court and its judges. He agreed to do the podcast. We agreed on tentative dates, but for some reason or other, we missed the deadline. He had always been kind and considerate to me. When his autobiography came out in 2010, he came to Bombay for some matter, and I took to him my copy, requesting for his photo autograph. And he wrote, my dear Nitin, with warm regards, Fali Nariman, 21st September 2010. I was elated and my day was made up. I last met when he presided over second Ashok Desai Memorial Lecture held in Delhi on 15 December 23. He narrated various incidents that happened with him and Ashok Desai, Soli Sorabji, Anil Diwan. And he climbed on the stage without any support. I salute him for his energy and his seriousness. His contribution to law has been spoken of in the morning. And we have several colleagues now who desire to share their thoughts. So I would conclude by remembering Fali, enjoying his cheese sandwiches on the third floor in the recess served by Mrs. Gracious, which saved her termination at BBA because kind soul that Mr. Nariman was would always call the president or secretary of the association before the resolution to remove Mrs. Gracious was to be taken up, requesting that the resolution be dropped and the committee to respect Mr. Nariman would always drop that resolution and Mrs. Gracious continued to serve cheese sandwiches. <coughs> On 20th February 24, he slept after he was read a chapter from the autobiography of a yogi. And he then slept for not to wake up and in this world in a true yogic style. Only way BBA would keep his memory alive would be by holding an annual event. And I announce that BBA Trust will hold an annual lecture series titled Mr. Fali Nariman Memorial Lecture in his memory in January every year, which is a birth month of Mr. Fali Nariman. <coughs> it is said, a great man is one who leaves others at a loss after he is gone. Fali uncle, we will certainly miss you. May your noble soul rest in peace. I now request Mr. Uh, Avinash Rana, who was one of the lawyers who had practiced with him, who had known him for several years. Avinash Rana, please. My Lord, the Chief Justice, my Lords of the High Court, former Chief Justices of the High Court, 
as well as the judges, retired judges of the Supreme Court. Fali Nariman's family, Nina and Khorshe, they are here. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and my brothers and sisters at the bar. Everybody knows what a great lawyer and erudite advocate Fali was. But I also knew him as a great gentleman. And I'm not going to say anything about his equipments and achievements as a lawyer. I'll confine my remarks to Fali Nariman, a lawyer, a, a person who was personified grace and goodness. He combined eloquence with intelligence and learning. Last month, I went to Delhi to attend his funeral, his burial. Not surprisingly, I saw people from all walks of life present at the burial. They all loved him and respected him for his humility, his nobility, his integrity, and above all, his courage of conviction. Before he left for Delhi on his appointment as the additional solicitor general, we used to meet on every Friday, or chamber number one, either at Fali's place or Soli's place, and we would be served with sumptuous dinner. Both Babsi Nariman and Zina Sorabji were very warm-hearted hostesses. At Bombay, we had a chamber, big chamber, Sir Jamsheji Kangas. Jamsheji did not want to have his chamber air conditioned, but Kharseji Baba, one of his juniors, he wanted. So his a small portion of the chamber was covered and was made air conditioned. Fully and all of us were with Kharseji Baba. Fully was a senior junior, and he was given a table and a chair. Rest of us, including Fali Sorabji, Jango uh, uh, Kambata, father of uh, our Darais Kambata, uh, uh, Ove Chinoy, Iqbal Chagla, Sandeep Thakur, and myself, we had small cubicles. Later on, Vassal Chaturpati also joined the chamber. We used to have a lot of fun, but after the, both of them, they left for Delhi, we were left here. <laughs> but I must point out, what a great person, and uh, uh, when after he left for Delhi, there were coffee posa detentions. And Fali was, uh, they were all challenged in the Delhi High Court and later on the Supreme Court. Fali was, as an additional solicitor general, was defending those detentions. To assist him, Parasharan, who later on became the additional uh, attorney general of, for India, was called from Madras, now Chennai, and I was called from Bombay, though I was not on the panel of the government. The small assistance we gave him, and he would be lavishly praise us and compliment us. Sometimes it was very embarrassing, but that was Fali Nariman. Then, I must point out his love. Uh, I must point out in the morning, he's one of the closest friends. Uh, uh, Bombay Mystery had come. He was an ar architect, and he was involved in some hef heavy litigation. Fali was there in the matter right from the inception. But after he went to Delhi, he would come on every Monday for Bombay's matter here as a friend. On Monday, in the Supreme Court and Delhi High Court, these two, three lawyers, Fali, Soli, and Ashok uh, Sen, 
they would make a real killing. That time the High Court would begin at 10 o'clock and Supreme Court at 10.30. So all these lawyers would first go and finish 10 matters or in the High Court and then to the Supreme Court. Now High Court realized the bar and they got the time change. So fr from 10.30 they also started working, so <laughs> depriving all these people. But leaving all this, sacrificing all 25, 26 matters, he would come for his, uh, out of sheer loyalty to his friend, Bombay Mistry. That was again. Before I resume my seat, I must point out that he loved his wife, Babsy, and of course his son, Rowinton, and his daughter, Anaida and uh, Rohinton's whole family. Before she passed away, Babsy was confined to wheelchair. Bab he could have employed fully any person to push the chair, but no. He would himself push the chair everywhere, and on the lawn the, where the ground was sometimes very uneven and rough, it requires a lot of force to move the chair. And the, uh, Yes, wheelchair. At one of the parties, I was there and I offered my services to Pushna. He told me very clearly that Babsi has served the whole family and me all these years. Now it is my turn to serve her. I don't want to be deprived of that privilege. That was Fali Nariman. I pointed out all, all these uh, instances to point out what a great man he was. Uh, he radiated human uh, values and the warmth. May God give divine peace to Fali's noble soul. May he bless his family, Rowinton, Anaita, and Rowinton's family. Nina and Korshad are here. May he bless all of you. Thank you very much. Honorable Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court, uh, judges past and present, Mr. Nitin Thakkar, President of the Bombay Bar Association, other office bearers, Anaita, Sanaya, Rointan, Khurshid, Nina, and friends. We are privileged to be here today to celebrate the life of Fali Nariman. I personally am honored to pay my tribute to him. Writing of the great cricketer Dennis Compton, Michael Melford wrote, nothing is unique, so they say, and that presumably includes no one. But if among batsmen, great and indifferent, Dennis Charles Scott Compton was not unique, it will be a long, long time before anyone comparable comes along. Substitute Fali Nariman for Compton and lawyer for batsmen, and there you have Fali in a nutshell. A unique lawyer, if ever there was one. What made him unique as a master of his craft? Was it his incredibly painstaking work, almost to the point of obsession? Was it his amazing court craft and his ability to read a judge, his opponent, 
and the matter itself as almost no other was it his rare gifts of advocacy which often cast a spell on the judge listening to him i venture to suggest not though these qualities which he had a plenty would themselves qualify him as unique to me who knew him intimately for 40 years and more i believe that what set him apart was his constant and almost insatiable quest for perfection his perennial dissatisfaction with himself and his almost obsessive quest to do better even if he could not achieve the perfection he strived for to those who knew fully well and there are many present today who did think of those notes he dictated and redicted and re redicted almost till the last minute before he opened his case fali's list of dates was almost an art form something he could well have patented for even that was unique i have been privileged to have seen some of fali's truly magical performances and a catalog of all of them would take a very long time to recount i won't do so i've just chosen two which stand out in my mind i begin with the challenge to the fifth journalists and non journalists wage award challenged of course as always by the indian express we were before a positively hostile bench justice kuldeep singh termed appropriately by ashok desai as a loose cannon pb saban with a decidedly left leaning approach to such matters and n p singh the talk in the corridors of the supreme court and in the canteen was that we'd be out in an hour and so it looked for the first hour for except for n p singh who remained silent the other two peppered fully non stop almost to the point where it was impossible for him to get a word edgewise it was awesome to see fully somehow hold his ground and keep going two days later to the amazement of one and all in the court he sat down having not only held the attention of the bench but actually turned it in our favor the other eight lawyers representing the other newspapers lasted all of 15 minutes the indian express was the only party to succeed in its challenge it was truly one of fali's greatest performances near a home in the bombay high court i recall his herculean effort in the herbertson's case with half the bar ranged against him and a near impossible case to carry let alone win the facts the law and equity were against us our opponents were a formidable team the matter went on for 24 days before justice gokhle conferences were held day and night we'd arrive early morning at 8 o'clock 
only to find Fali already hard at work. At the end of it, Fali came out triumphant. Saleh Bhai, a chivalrous and sporting opponent, if ever there was one, laughed as we came out of court, shook his head and said, only Fali could have pulled off this one. But to dwell on Fali merely as a lawyer would do a disservice to him. For he had great qualities of head and heart. To those who were close to him, he was warm-hearted, generous, and a loyal friend who endeared himself by his wit and his charm. He was erudite and knowledgeable, but wore his learning lightly on his shoulder. His writings on an array of subjects was prolific. So too, his lectures and talks. His reading was vast and eclectic. And he would enthusiastically recommend a book he had read or even send a copy to you if he thought you would read it. He was a conversationalist par excellence. He had a great sense of humor and delighted in reminiscing of years gone by, often recounting incidents to which he had been a witness, or which he in turn had heard from someone at the bar. He had his favorite phrases, which he often repeated. Even Homer nods was one of them if someone had goofed off and behaved foolishly. And possibly his most favorite, you must learn to kill your darlings about some pet bee in the bonnet that some lawyer had and wanted him to push in court and which he thought ought not to be pushed. One could go on and on, but time prevents it. Let me therefore end with these lines of Sir Walter Scott, written on the death of one of the greatest prime ministers of England, William Pitt, which I believe to be a just tribute to him. Now is the stately column broke. The beacon light is quenched in smoke. The trumpet's silver sound is still. The warder silent on the hill. I now request Mr. Dwarkadas to address the audience. My Lord, the Chief Justice, Mr. President, office bearers of the Bombay Bar Association, family members of Fali Nariman, judges past and present of this court and the Supreme Court, ladies and gentlemen. I joined the bar in late 1977. I was fortunate to join the chambers of Iqbal Chagla. At that time, Iqbal was sharing a tiny antechamber with Kharshaji Baba, which was allotted to Fali. Fali had already migrated to Delhi by then. He was, however, a frequent visitor to Mumbai. Since I had joined Iqbal, I was also privileged to be a part of the lunch table on the third floor of the High Court building occupied by the BBA. Whenever Fali was appearing in the Bombay High Court, he would have lunch at the BBA premises with us on the third floor. Lunch time in those days used to be between 2 and 2.45 p.m. 
it was in those 45 minutes which he spent with us that I got to know Fali, the man. Contrary to what most lawyers thought of Fali, what I discovered about him at that time was that he had a great sense of humor. He was a great mimic, a great raconter of stories, full of interesting and humorous anecdotes about matters in court, judges, and solicitors. What I found most interesting about Fali was that he took his profession very, very seriously, but never took himself very seriously. One trait that stood out about him was that he hardly ever spoke about his own cases, or as most of us lawyers are wont to do, I said this to the judge, I said that to the judge. These words never came out of Fali's mouth, even though he may have argued the most seminal cases. Another prominent feature of his personality, which I discovered was, that I never heard him speak ill about anybody. As long as he was around at the lunch table, from time to time, you would only hear the sound of loud, loud guffaws and roaring laughter from all of us seated around him. There was never a serious or dull moment. And yet, virtually as if the stage lights had been switched off. Come 2.40 p.m. and Fali would become Fali Nariman, the most formidable lawyer and advocate. And in a trice, he would be gone, rushing down to the high court library or to the courts. In the course of his visits to Mumbai, Fali gave me three invaluable pieces of advice. In 1976-77, the highest rates of personal income tax were around 66%. Fali would, however, have paid income tax at the highest extortionate rate of income tax at 97.75% prior to 1975. And yet, his advice to me was, one, always pay your taxes and sleep peacefully. Two, do not defer collecting your fees to the following year in the hope that tax rates will come down. And three, never refuse a brief before any court, tribunal, or administrative authority. Always remember he would say, the smaller the man, the larger the ego. That's where you learn to deal with judges. Later in my career, when I was visiting Delhi, and had occasion to appear with him, he would often request me to stay back in the evening and join him for drinks and dinner. Babsi and Fali made the most gracious hosts and the evening would fly by with Fali holding forth and regaling us with countless stories and anecdotes once again without talking about his own cases. I have always believed that by recognizing and emulating the virtues of the departed soul, we pay him the highest tribute. The most striking qualities of Fali the advocate, which I consider certainly worth emulating, are one, passion for the law. Anyone who has seen Fali in conferences or in court could not have missed his devotion to and the passion that he displayed for the law. Law, they say, is a jealous mistress, but Fali was truly and madly in love with the profession. 
it is said only passions great passions can elevate the soul to great things his second striking quality was curiosity which i found had become fali's second nature it is said curiosity is the engine of achievement socrates was known for his curiosity he emphasized the importance of questioning and testing the foundations of knowledge and wisdom socrates had said the only true wisdom is in knowing that you know nothing like socrates fali used to say the more i practice the law the less i seem to know about it and like socrates fali would fire off an endless barrage of questions to the team assisting him never satisfied till he felt he had the right answer and then he would start all over again sometimes questioning his own notes and his own conclusions albert einstein has said do not grow old no matter how long you live never cease to stand like curious children before the mystery into which we were born it is also said be curious but not judgmental this is exactly what fali was his other quality was industry my father always said work has never killed anybody in all the years that i have spent at the bar i do not think i have come across anyone young or old who displayed greater industry than fali this despite fali having probably had the ablest minds assisting him and the highest level of experience bach the great music composer had once said i was made to work if you are equally industrious you will be equally successful his other quality was perseverance it is said perseverance is not a long race it is many short races one after the other it is also said success is not final failure is not fatal it is the courage to continue that actually counts fali always said winning cases is not the measure of success because if that were so i have lost more cases than i have won the fact that fali may have lost more cases than he may have won never made fali give up his pursuit for excellence tenacity was another quality which fali possessed in great deal it is said the most difficult thing is the decision to act the rest is mere tenacity nobody who had seen fali or been at the receiving end on the other side can dispute the fact that fali was one of the most tenacious lawyers that india has ever produced and yet fali never attacked his opponent nor was fali overbearing towards any of the judges with all his tenacity at his command there was never any rancor or ill will towards either the counsel the solicitor or the client on the other side only fali's advocacy remained forceful humility it is said pride is concerned with who is right humility is concerned with what is right having got to know fali over the years as a person what i found most endearing about his character was that fali treated every individual alike be he a pun or the senior most member of the bar or the bench or any other person who may be highly placed i have never seen fali throw his weight or reputation around 
However much the provocation either from the bar or the bench, Fali never talked down to any judge. Anticipation. Fali was like a chess player. He could anticipate the course and destiny of the matter even before the case took off the ground. He was not only a mind reader, but could also read the lips of judges even when they would be discussing something amongst themselves in whispers. And this put Fali so far ahead of his rivals. The last quality I would like to talk about, which made Fali stand apart from all others, was discipline. Fali epitomized what a disciplined life can be. In mind, body, and soul, Fali had an extremely disciplined life, whether it was food, drink, exercise, or work. It was always well regulated. Fali believed in the adage that when you work, you work, and when you play, you play. He never mixed the two. Fali never believed in resting on his laurels. He never let his success slow him down, nor did he forsake his disciplined life. No wonder Fali remained at the top of the game till the very end. It is the discipline which not only catapulted Fali to the top, but by continuing to lead a disciplined life throughout his career, Fali was able to maintain that position for more than four decades. In fact, thanks to the regularity of his habits, Fali died with his boots on. At age 95, whilst he was on his legs in a matter the day prior to his death and was meant to continue his arguments the day he passed away. In Fali's passing, we have not only lost a great jurist, a great human being, but also a great soul. My deepest condolences to the members of the Nariman family. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. The Honorable, the Chief Justice, Honorable sitting and former judges, the President of the Bombay Bar Association, Managing Committee members, colleagues at the bar, and in particular, dear Nina and Khurshid Nariman. One can endlessly eulogize about Fali Sam Nariman and his innumerable achievements, his enviable erudition, that he was a tactician par excellence on his legs. And the list goes on and on and on. But for me, he was, is, and will always remain Fali uncle for two principal reasons. First, we were introduced for the very first time when I was clad in what was haute couture back then for me. I was in my leaky lungot. The second reason trumps the first by a mile. I was the third successive generation in my family to brief him. He once shared with me during one of our several mentally draining conferences, that is mentally draining for me, he said, I say Munim, when you send me a brief, it has a docket marked brief on behalf of the plaintiff for final hearing of the notice of motion. But when your grandfather Bachubai sent me his brief, clipped to his docket, were manuscript typewritten detailed instructions that included case law. He lamented, those days are long gone. While I had the honor and privilege to work with Fali on a plethora of different and diverse disputes over the past 35 years, I will recount only two of these matters. One of the matters was what became known as the forest matter. I was drafted into the matter just after the SLP had been filed against the judgment of the division bench of our court. Now, just imagine my plight. I had to brief Fali Uncle in a matter bristling with law points, which he was steeped in and which he had argued himself in the high court. 
but he had this amazing ability to tease out the best from his team of juniors. We held many a conference at which he drafted, redrafted, and drafted yet again the list of dates in the matter. And on one occasion even exclaimed, which fool has drafted this? As he remained dissatisfied with his efforts, as was his wont. On my return to Mumbai from one such conference, when I was putting the nth draft of the list of dates together, I thought I had an eureka moment and struck upon what I thought was a pure legal argument. On my next visit to Delhi, I triumphantly strode into 2122 Hoskar's enclave and purposefully arranged my papers on his large circular conference table. As Fali uncle walked in and asked for the draft list of dates, I handed them over to him and my exuberance got the better of me and I launched off into my legal point. He listened intently and then snapped back in his trademark style. I say, Munim, we are now in the Supreme Court and we can't argue an entirely new point at this late stage. Because I always got away with blue murder with him, I quite foolishly proclaimed this living legend of the law. But this is a pure law point, Fali uncle. This only made him erupt. Munim, we can't go on in this fashion. Stony silence followed whilst he corrected the list of dates. And after a while, he told Subhash Sharma, his trusted lieutenant, to summon Vinod, his long-standing clerk, to take dictation. Once Vinod had come and settled down, Fali uncle turned to me and said, I say, Munim, look sharp now and dictate your great law point, but slowly, in a few simple words. And if you exceed one or one and a half pages, you're going to be finished in court and dictate without referring to any of your papers because you have it all in your head. Fali uncle put his spit and polish on the list of dates and masterfully argued each and every law point before the bench of his lordship, Mr. Justice R. M. Loda, as he then was. And the rest is history, reported in 2014-3 SCC 4. 430. The second matter, which I will narrate more pithily, I hope, was a mega corporate battle of old in the late 1990s to which Mr. Sirvai referred to in his speech. The who's who at the Bombay Bar was arrayed on either side. We fortunately were led by Fali uncle. The final hearing of the motion, notice of motion alone lasted for several weeks of which Fali uncle missed only two days as he had to unavoidably travel to Paris uh, for a prior commitment. In contrast, the galaxy of stars on the other side merely put in guest appearances in court. No prizes for guessing which side succeeded in the matter. But notwithstanding that Fali uncle spent large number of days on his legs, often from 11 a.m. to 4.45, our old court timings. He would tell us all to assemble in his corner suite at the Trident at 5.30 p.m. And he would dart off first to the Gaylord Bakery at Churchgate and buy several boxes of tea cakes, muffins, cheese straws, and the like. As the army of juniors trooped into his suite, Babsi auntie graciously asked each one of us for coffee and tea and promptly commencing make, making it herself in the tiny pantry in the suite. If an eager beaver, of which we were several, wanted to discuss the day's play, Fali uncle gently chided us to first fill our bellies and have our tea and coffee. What was not lost on anybody in that suite was that the Narimans could quite easily have ordered half the room service menu for us. But they chose to put their personal touch on what at times was a daily ritual for us. With the passing away of Fali uncle, one is reminded of the lines 
in Alfred Lord Tennyson's King Arthur. The old order changeth, yielding place to new. But one wonders whether the new order will at all be able to emulate this colossus of a man, for it will require a Herculean effort to do so. He was the last of my mentors, from whom not only did I learn massive chunks of the law and the art of concise drafting, but more importantly, the finer art of being a good human being. As I said to his brilliant son, Justice Roington Nariman, at the funeral, I will dearly miss Fali Uncle. May his great soul rest in peace. I request Mr. Kambata. My Lord, the Chief Justice, Honorable Judges, President of the Bombay Bar Association, Mr. Thakkar, the Honorable Mr. Justice Nariman and Sanaya, who I know are listening in, Anaita, Nina, and Rohan, Khurshid, friends. There come rare moments in the lives of humanity when we must pause and reflect on greatness. And I believe this is one such moment. When John Duncan Inverarity and Sir Jamsaji Kanga died, the High Court shut down for that day. Fali would not have wanted anything like that in these times. But he gets something similar, because I believe for the first time in its history, a meeting like this to commemorate a member has been held on the lawns of the High Court. And this gathering and the feelings in each of our hearts is a giant tribute to this colossus. His passing marks the end of an era that we were all blessed to have been a small part of. Now this is a very appropriate venue because he started his career in the chambers of that grand old man and doyan of the Basa, Jamsaji Kanga, right here in this very room on the right hand side, one of these three windows overlooking these lawns. These were the old chambers of chamber number one. And he did so as devil to that other tenacious council, Karseji Baba. Till the very end, Fali was proud of that lineage. And he spoke fondly and respectfully of Sir Jamsaji even during his last days. For the Bombay High Court, Fali was more than just the great son of the court who rose to dominate the Supreme Court in the 1980s and 1990s. He was for decades its pater familias, then its doyan, and now in the last few years unquestionably became the Bhishma Pitma, reading the struggle for justice, rule of law, independence of the judiciary, and for constitutionality itself. He coupled his amazing, probing intellect with a restlessness of thought. No dra note or draft was good enough. It had to be improved. And the process went on incessantly until the final product, polished to an amazing ferocity, was presented to the court. And how it was presented. Anyone who heard him in court can never forget that metallic voice rising to a fever pitch when necessary and directing wave after wave of irresistible logic at the court. His mind was perpetually at work. He never stopped thinking about a matter, whether on a walk, at a meal, sometimes even during the middle of the night. He would get up and scribble his epiphanies on small chits of paper so he wouldn't forget them the next day. He was such an original thinker. Each case for him was a quest a quest for evolving an argument or theory. He always spoke about the need to think about a difficult case, away from the papers and all the minutiae of a case. Something he had learnt from the legendary C.K. Duckfury, who he admired greatly. But what you saw in court was only the tip of a very deep iceberg. The argument was always marked by a simplification is chewing technicality and exuding sheer common sense and an argument always firmly anchored in justice and equity. Fali never resorted to judgments 
for the sake of the judgments without framing why he was citing them in the context of the justice of the case. And all with this fantastic turn of foot that we witnessed, mid argument sometimes, to suit the response or reaction of a judge. At his core, he was a product of the original side of this great court, a commercial trial lawyer. But he blossomed into one of India's finest constitutional lawyers and jurists. At the time he was appointed a young additional solicitor general in Delhi, the great Motilal Settlewood had finally decided to hang up his boots and to return to Bombay as it then was. As he bid goodbye to his friends at the Supreme Court, he told Fali, keep the Bombay flag flying. And how magnificently Fali did. Soon enough, Fali's moment came, and when put to the test, he displayed exemplary courage. When the emergency was declared, he promptly resigned in protest, hoping that it would set off a chain reaction. He was wrong. No one else did, and he was alone. And few knew that at that time he was slated to be appointed Solicitor General. Fewer still know that he swore an affidavit setting out the circumstances of his resignation, entrusting it to his dear friend D.M. Popat, a Bombay solicitor, lest the unthinkable happen. Independence and free will were for him paramount. In later years, he would turn down offers to be a judge of the Supreme Court, attorney general, law minister, and God knows what else. But for me, he was always the hero who I worshipped and the star that led me to the bar. When I first appeared with Fali in the early 1990s, I was overwhelmed by the sheer scale of his intellectual and his physical energy. In those early days, 30 minutes of a conference, an early morning conference sometimes, the earliest I've had is at 6.30 in the morning, were far more exhausting than the actual encounter in court. And then there were the phone calls, even earlier in the morning. And when I used to recount this to my colleagues at the bar in Bombay, I was told, this is nothing. You should have seen him in the early 1980s. Conferences with Fali were always highly charged affairs. It was not uncommon for him to lambast a client or a solicitor, who in their heart of hearts, I always felt, face, felt that facing the wrath of a court was far easier. His conferences were strewn with now legendary admonitions. Look sharp. Write it down. Write it down. The stress levels had the remarkable effect of concentrating the mind. Fali appeared in just about every important case before the Supreme Court in the 1980s and 90s, and I don't want to recount the lot. Judgment after judgment in various fields of law. And yet, he was humble and self-effacing. I remember assisting him in a matter where we cited decision after decision in which he had starred. Not once did he mention to the court anything about those judgments, recounting any anecdote or what he had told the judge or what had happened. In contrast to our worthy opponent, who never lost the opportunity to trumpet the fact of his having appeared in this case or that, far fewer than Fali. But that was Fali's humility. One particular experience I will always cherish is when I accompanied Fali and Babsi to visit that most gentle of human beings, Justice Krishna Iyer, in his simple and unassuming office in Cochin. I was the fly on the wall at this meeting between two giant intellects, and I was privileged to witness their warmth, honesty, and humility. His championing of friends and causes is legendary. I was drawn into many of these battles, and I witnessed his unswerving dedication and loyalty. Bombay Mystery, a struggle which he partook of from 1967 to 2019. Jamshed Wadia and other cases. He turned these into a crusade. The case became more important for him than even for his friend. And he gave up all else to structure the case, either from behind the scenes or ultimately in court. But above all, it was his fearless speaking of the truth that made Fali stand the tallest. When all seemed lost in a cause, he would suddenly speak. And indeed, the very heavens seemed to open at that point. 
the entire bar and the bench knew in its heart that it was only when Fali spoke on a legal issue or an issue of justice that we would hear the final judgment. He truly was the conscience keeper of the bar and of the Supreme Court. He championed causes that were unpopular. He appeared for those who had fallen from public favor. But he kept loyal to his friends and to his causes. He had the raw of a lion and also the heart of a lion. He kept that Bombay flag flying tall and proud to the very end. He was one of the greatest sons of this court, of the Supreme Court and of India. As Homer said in his Iliad, Achilles absent is still Achilles. So shall be said, Fully absent is still Fully. His tenacity and never say die spirit will resonate the courtrooms and corridors of our courts forever. And the finest tribute we can pay to him is to set his life as an example to aspire to and to pledge ourselves to. Neil Desperandum. He was a voice in the wilderness very often, for so many years and for so many causes, but he never let it break his spirit. He never gave up. The future belongs to the brave and Fali was the greatest brave heart. All his life, never fearful of speaking truth to power. However unpopular it might be and often it was. Never stop laboring over a case. Fali never felt that he'd cracked a case with some silver bullet until he'd fully argued it and even then he was thinking about the appeal. He was not ashamed to cast, recast and re-recast his thoughts, drafts, jettisoning some, sticking to others, drawing light from any source in the conference, howsoever junior, apart from his own gigantic intellect. He was always truthful and respectful with the court, even under the heaviest fire. He never stopped learning and reading. He did it to his very last days. He was an insatiable learner. He was as humble as humble you could be. Poke fun at yourself, he said. It helps lower the temperature and betters the atmosphere for intellectual thought. I remember after some, he would come to Bombay, and he would come to the High Court Library after his day's work was done. And he would sit there. And he would call for the Law Quarterly Review from Govind. He'd shout out, Govind, get the Law Quarterly Review. He'd read that. He'd chat with us juniors. He'd talk about all sorts of things. But he made it a point to be there for that 15 minutes or half an hour every time he came to Bombay. And he did the same in the Supreme Court. And he built up this huge fund of goodwill and warmth towards him. These were all the things I've witnessed Fali doing, and it made him the titanic personality that he was. And finally, as many of my fellow speakers have said, when the day's battle was done, he would do and personify those great words of Sir Walter Scott, of which he was so fond of. A lawyer without history or literature is a mechanic, a mere working mason. But if he possesses some knowledge, of law or literature, he may venture to call himself an architect. Fali was one of the most magnificent architects this profession will ever know. As Aeschylus said, he tamed the savageness of men and strove to make gentle the life of this world. So I think the best way to remember him is whenever we feel overwhelmed by adversity and disheartened, I have no doubt each one of us will hear in our hearts his metallic voice chide us. I say, look sharp if you don't mind, and we will overcome. Thank you. My Lord, the Chief Justice, judges of this court, the office bearers of the association. My association with Fali Nariman came rather early in the day. I was a fledgling lawyer of about five to six years when coincidence and chance put me in matters with him. 
It was scary, extraordinarily interesting, and every day was a new revelation in dealing with him. It was a privilege which I really began to appreciate many years later. It was like having the best lawyer in the country teach you what law and lawyering is all about. Watching him in those years and later years, I am firmly of the belief that he was our best advocate. But that was only half the story. Underlying these phenomenal legal performances in court, which could be a movie in itself if you watched him perform, was a great deal of time spent in thought, in deliberation, in conferences with their share of pyrotechnics. There would be papers flung sometimes. There'd be clients dodging them other times. There would be Bobo watching us while we did our matters. But that was all par for the course. It was this thought, the ability to focus, that put Fali right ahead of the game. He, after going through the process of these conferences and a lot of thought, would get to the heart of the matter. There was a clarity of thought and an ability to focus on the heart of the matter, which was unparalleled. In court, he was persuasive, but never strident or loud. It was almost like watching a prima donna in action, each performance being better than the last. He would have required pushback of the court, but always without being either offensive or abrasive. When one looks, you know, there are so many incidents, but one can't really deal with that in a gathering of this nature. But what was amazing was his uncanny ability to see what the court would want. I'll only mention one incident because it is so strange that I've never forgotten it. We had argued in the Goa bench of the Bombay High Court a very complex matter about whether the Environmental Protection Act was prospective or retrospective, and we had succeeded. The other side had come in SLP, and we went for this conference with Fali. And we had all these lawyers and all these clients, and we went on about all our important legal arguments. Then after about 20 minutes, he stopped. And he said, will you plant trees? So we all thought, what is the man talking about? Trees? Uh, so we again went back to the law. Five minutes later, he said, will you plant trees or not? So we assured him, assured him that we would plant trees and hope that he would also look at the law. The next morning, we were item one in court. The matter was called out. Justice Venkatrayama was in charge of the bench. And he looked round. Indira Jai Singh was for the other side. He looked round, looked at us, and he said, will you plant trees? And we all thought, this is just amazing. And this complex SLP relating to all sorts of questions of law was dismissed, not to be treated as a precedent, on our planting trees. But I, I mentioned this to say that if it wasn't Fali Nariman, you'd probably wonder whether he had a connection with the court. It was just uncanny, absolutely. When one looks at his years at the bar, the brilliance which he attained, the diverse constitutional complex matters which he addressed, it might be difficult for you to accept or understand that he was not a lawyer by choice. In his book he writes, I was not a lawyer by choice, but because I had secured a second class in my BA degree, and there was no other choice other than law, as I had no sense of science or mathematics. So there was this giant who wasn't even intending to become a lawyer, took it as a last resort, and ended up as probably the best lawyer we have or will ever have. But I would say something on an area which no one has touched. 
He was much more than a brilliant lawyer. He was a lawyer with a human and a constitutional conscience. And one with the courage to stand for his convictions and to act on his beliefs. When he was appointed ASG in 1972, as they mentioned, he was the only law officer who resigned when the emergency was declared. But he lamented that my resignation made no impact, not even ripples in the political waters of the time. I was simply not important enough. In his book, he writes that he told Babsi that maybe if I had been Attorney General, they might have noticed my resignation. Fali was a champion of civil liberties, judicial independence, and the constitutional values of secularism and fraternity. And that is one part which really can't be forgotten. In the last decade of his life, he was one of the few leading councils of this country to have openly voiced disquiet at the manner in which the constitutional fabric of fraternity and secular values was fast being undermined. I say this not to interject an element of politics, but to refer to a man who believed and had the courage to stand up for what he believed, even if it might put him out of line with the political dispensation of his times. He was a great man and a great lawyer. And I remember in his last, in his book, When Memory Fades, he expressed great concern about the decline in constitutional values of fraternity and secularism. In fact, he writes in the last lines of his book that I have lived and flourished in a secular India. And in the fullness of time, if God wills, I would like to die in a secular India. He was an absolutely brilliant lawyer and a great man. We'll remember him for his skills as a lawyer, but also for his convictions and the courage he stood in standing by them. Greatness really can't be measured in words, and that's all we can really say. is a mark of respect to the departed soul, we will observe silence for one minute. 